Hello everyone! I'm so glad you're here for another exciting episode of Offstage Drop the Act at Sugarloaf Kids Online. Sure, it's fun to wear a costume sometimes and act like someone you're not. But in real life, we've got to drop the act and live with integrity. Let's say it together. This is our life app for this month. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. It's about following God and being the real you, wherever you are. Like it says in our memory verse for this month, which is Proverbs 10, 9. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. You know what would make me happy? Yeah, you guessed it. If we tried it together. So everyone get up on your feet and let's do it. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. God can help us live truthfully, but when we do that, we can stay close to him. I've got a great game for you today, and I want to see how close you can get to the right answer. I like to call it close, but no potato. Hey, now we're gonna pick our contestants, but you guys are gonna be surprised. We're gonna get to meet our small group leaders. We haven't seen them in a long time, so I need you to help me welcome them to play our game. Would our kindergarten and first grade team come on down? Abigail Krieger and Anna Pollard, woo! And now let's meet our second and third grade team. Come on down! Miss Jenny and Miss Kathy. All right, let's get ready to play. Welcome contestants. Here's how you play Close But No Potato. We'll reveal a secret item out of a bag and you'll write down how much you think the item costs. The person who's closest without going over wins that round. For my friends watching at home, you can guess too. Grab a piece of paper and write down how much you think the item costs and see how many you get right. Are you ready to play? Yay! All right, let's reveal the first item. Someone pick up the bag and let's see what's inside. How much do you think the potato costs? Reveal your answers. Oh, close, but no potato. <laughs> that potato costs 63 cents. All right, let's see who can pick up the second bag and show us what's inside. How much do a pack of markers cost? Reveal your answers. Close, but no potato. The box of Crayola costs 97 cents. Oh what? I know. Let's see what's in the next bag. A paint set, watercolors. Reveal your answers. <gasps> Abigail, you won that round and everybody else was close but no <laughs> potato. <laughs> Good job, Abigail. What's in the next bag? Ooh, a Wendy's Kids Meal. How much does a Wendy's Kids Meal cost these days? Reveal your answers. Close but no potato. It was about 316. Almost. Let's reveal our last item. A large Elmer's glue. How much does this cost? Reveal your answers. 
Believe it or not, the Elmer's glue is 484. You're close, but no potato. Abigail, you are our winner of Close to No Potato. Good job, everybody, and thanks for playing. Nice guessing, everyone. You were really close at getting closest to the price of those items. We're gonna find out why it's so important to be close in our Bible story today. But first, let's draw a little closer. I'm serious. I have a secret. A little closer. I have to tell you something. We reopen next Sunday! Yay! We reopen, we reopen. I knew you guys would be excited too. I can't wait for you to come back and see me at campus right here. All your favorite small group leaders will be here and they can't wait to see you too. And here's the other super exciting thing. Are you ready? The next Sunday on October 25th, it's our crazy cool costume contest and you don't wanna miss it. You wanna to come to church in your crazy cool costumes. And after church, the Kona Ice Truck is gonna be here for our Fall Fest party. We're gonna to get to help stock the shelves of all the local food banks so that people in our community who are hungry have food to eat. Isn't that awesome? You guys get to help. I want you to bring a bag of food to the Fall Fest party. That's your secret passcode to get in. Oh my goodness, look what time it is. It's time for our show. Let's count it down together from 10.
Hi, I'm Graham, and today we're talking about integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. It's really important to be truthful always. To be yourself. To not hide behind a mask. Okay, fine. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Something fishy's going on around here. Why is Graham wearing a mask? Well, I messed up, and I don't want you to see. I did something I wasn't supposed to, and I'm embarrassed about it. But we are talking about being truthful, so here goes. I'm sorry. I can't do it. It's just it's too embarrassing. I borrowed my sister's super special hair shining shampoo, even though she told me not to. Now I'm scared to let you see what happened. I'm such a, such a scaredy cat. This is one of the reasons why being truthful in what you say and do is so hard. If I show people the real me, they might laugh at me or make fun of me. They might think I'm a bad person. They might not love me. Well, you know what? Integrity is worth the risk. <gasps> nope, I'm not ready. In today's story, we'll learn why being truthful doesn't have to be so scary. Y'all come back soon now, partners. I'm never taking this hat off. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. One of Jesus' closest friends, the Apostle John, shared important words from God in one of his letters. But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, He will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Let's see how this truth might play out today. Tori could barely contain her excitement when she showed her dad the small plastic rectangle with her face on it, her brand new driver's license. See, I can drive myself now. If you had a car. Mom said I can borrow her car some days. If you pay for gas. If I pay for gas. Cell phone. Phone off while I'm driving. Tori held up her phone and shut it off. That's right. And no passengers, no driving after 9 p.m., full stop at every stop sign, music at a moderate volume. I got it. I guess you do. So can I borrow mom's car to go play tennis with Keisha? Please? Be home by nine. Thanks, dad. Even though Tori had been driving with her mom and dad for months now, her stomach did a flip when she first started the car. Driving carefully out of the driveway, her hands white knuckled on the steering wheel for the first mile until she pulled into the spot in the tennis courts at the high school. She was almost relaxed. Her best friend, Keisha, waved. <laughs> nice park job. Tori hopped out and checked her spacing. Yeah, okay, I'm a little crooked, but there's no one else here. The two friends played for more than an hour before Tori checked time. Oops, gotta get home. By the time Tori had stowed out her gear and fiddled with the temperature controls, Keisha was already gone. Here goes. As Tori backed the car out of the spot, she reached over to adjust the radio. I cannot deal with mom's music. Oh no. Tori braked fast. She put the car in park and hopped out. She had just hit the light pole and left a small dent in the bumper. It's not very big. Tori reached for her phone to call dad, but she had already turned off her phone for the drive. I'll just tell them when I get home. Tori stayed tense the whole way home. Oh, they'll never let me borrow the car again. But it's just a small dent, and Mom's car is really old anyway. Dad was working on his Jeep in the garage when Tori pulled in. Hey, sweetie, how was it? Tori opened up her mouth to tell Dad about the dent, but she couldn't seem to do it. Fine, great. My serve's getting a lot better. Tori avoided Mom, too. She tried to go straight to her room and read, but she couldn't focus. I might as well go to bed. Most evenings, Tori used a gratitude app on her phone as a reminder to thank God for the good things in her day. Uh, Friday, let's see. But Tori didn't want to think about her day or talk to God 
at all. Finally, she turned off the light, but even so, she couldn't fall asleep. Next morning, she came down to find Dad making French toast. Maple syrup or strawberries and whipped cream? Both. Where's Mom? She went out to get groceries. Should be back any minute. As Tori sat down to her favorite breakfast, memories of the dented bumper started flooding back. I guess I'm not really that hungry right now. The garage door opened. Mom shouldered her way inside, carting heavy groceries. Would you believe it? Someone dinged my bumper in the parking lot and took off. Tori's heart sank. She wished she could simply disappear. Did you see it happen? No, and they didn't leave a note. Hit and run. I'll take a look. Uh, Mom? Mom glanced up and saw Tori. Hi, Tor. I didn't mean to rain on your morning. What's up? Uh, nothing. I, I mean, I, I'm i gonna go out and rake some leaves. That would be super helpful. Rakes against the back wall. Tori couldn't meet Mom's eyes when she walked out the door. She raked as hard and as fast as she could, but she couldn't sweep away what happened. It's not like I lied, ex exactly. Oh, who am I kidding? Unlocking her phone, Tori scrolled through her messages for a message from her small group leader, Lisa, that she'd sent weeks ago. Wanted to share. Oh, here's the verse. But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Tori scanned the verse again and sighed. She dropped her rake and plopped right in the middle of her leaf pile. So, um, God, I really messed up. I mean, you know all about it, but I dented mom's car and I hid the truth. I lied. I'm really sorry. As Tori lay in the scratchy leaves, staring up at the bright blue sky, she felt a sense of peace for the first time all day. Thank you, God. After a few minutes, Tori scrambled to her feet, brushed the leaves off, and went towards the house. Mom, Dad, there's something I have to tell you. Tori knew she'd be paying to fix the car, and she might lose driving privileges for a while, but it was worth the cost to know she wasn't hiding the truth anymore. A long time after Jesus died and came back to life, one of his disciples named John wrote this, God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Do you know what that means? It means with God, it doesn't matter if we've messed up or broken the rules or if we're embarrassed about something that we've done. We don't have to hide from him. He will forgive every wrong thing. With God, you can be the real you and he won't laugh at you or make fun of you. He won't think you're a bad person and most importantly, God will always love you. Yeehaw! Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment for all the wrong things you've done and all the wrong things you'll ever do. That's why when you're truthful with God, you don't have to be scared. In fact, here's the one thing to remember today. Being truthful with God keeps you close to Him. So when you mess up, don't hide it. Talk to God about it. Tell Him how you really feel. It should feel good to get all these things off your chest. Like, maybe it will feel good for me to show you what it looks like when you don't listen to your sister, and when you don't follow the instructions on a super special hair shining shampoo bottle. No, no, no way. <laughs> I'll talk to God about it. See you next time. Oh, lather, rinse, repeat. Lather, rinse, repeat. Why didn't I repeat, God? Why didn't I? Oh, oh, you saw nothing. Once in a while, you cover up an itty bitty lie with the 
big fat smile But an itty bitty lie still lying That's not your style Put stick to the middle of the path From mile to mile Maybe you want it real bad So you'd say okay Maybe you make the promise But then you break it Maybe you didn't learn the words So you fake it And you feel Then you're gonna get stuck It might feel like a little lie But it's gonna catch up Do what you say you're gonna do You'll be on your way up Instead you're on your way up You'll be living straight up friends do and everybody's still a good friend who sticks like glue cause everybody did what they said and everybody was true maybe you wanted it but you didn't take it maybe you promised and then you didn't break it maybe you learned the words so you didn't fail Then you're gonna get stuck It might feel like a little lie But it's gonna catch up Do what you say you're gonna do You'll be on your way up Instead you're on your way up You'll be living straight up If you move too far to the side Then you're gonna get stuck It might feel like a little lie But it's gonna catch up Do what you say you're gonna do, you'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You can choose to be true Not just to everybody else, but true to you You can choose to be true Not just to everybody else, but true to you True to you to know that God will forgive us when we ask Him. We can trust Him no matter what. And that's why it's so important for us to be truthful with Him. This is what we want you to remember today, our bottom line. Being truthful with God keeps you close to Him. God showed us how much He loves us when He sent His Son, Jesus. Jesus made a way for us to stay close to God, even when we mess up. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the ultimate consequence for all the things that we do wrong. We never have to worry about sin getting in the way between us and God because Jesus paid a price for that sin. The truth is, we all mess up from time to time, but you can talk to God instead of trying to hide you can tell him that you're sorry. You can ask him to forgive you. Remember that he loves you and he's always going to be there for you. Maybe you have trouble with telling the truth, especially when you know that you could get in trouble. Or maybe you're tempted to sneak candy when your parents aren't looking. Maybe you've had a mean thought about a friend or called your brother or sister a name. You can talk to God about any of those things. You can ask Him to forgive you 
and you can ask him to help you make the wise choice next time. Just remember, being truthful with God keeps you close to him. You're going to get to talk about this a little bit more when you dive into your activities for the week. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely. But anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Proverbs 10 9. What's the difference between the two paths? Exactly. One was crooked and one was straight. When we choose integrity, it's like walking a smooth, straight path. There's no blame or fault, no reason to sneak around. When we choose to be truthful with our words and actions, we can be confident of that. When we choose to be dishonest, when we say one thing but do another, it's like taking the crooked path. And what does our verse say about that crooked path? Eventually, we're gonna get caught. So, it's better to choose integrity from the start. This week, when you find yourself in a situation where you're tempted to lie or cheat or do something dishonest, think about those two paths. Think about which one you'd rather be on. Choose integrity so that you can be truthful with your whole life. Let's look at our next activity. You're gonna need your Bible and the sometimes, always, and never activity page and some type of small tokens or candy or pennies or even scraps of paper. Here's what you're gonna do. Read the story on the card and put the correct number of tokens in the middle. Three tokens if you would always make that choice. Two tokens if you would sometimes make the choice and one token if you would never make that choice. Let's try one together so that you can get the hang of it. Alex wanted to watch a YouTube channel that his parents said was not allowed. So, Alex borrowed his friend's tablet on the bus and watched an episode before they ever got to school. After listening to that story, you would put three tokens into the center if you would always make that choice, two tokens if you would sometimes make that choice, and one token if you would never make that choice. After you get through all the cards, I want you to grab your Bible and read Proverbs 10-9 out loud together. Our verse says that anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but You'll probably see from the tokens in the middle that everyone has made mistakes. We all make bad choices sometimes. So the big question is, how do we show integrity and be honest even though we make bad choices? And that's just part of being human. I want you to talk about that with your parent or siblings this week. The best way is by talking to God about what happened. Being truthful with God keeps you close to Him. So when you've made a mistake or hurt someone else, you don't have to stay stuck on that path. When you're honest with God about your sin, He forgives you and He gives you the strength to make it right with others. You could go back to the straight, safe path. Friends, everyone makes mistakes, but being truthful with God keeps you close to Him. That's all I've got for you today. I will see you next week. And if you're coming in person, I can't wait to see you on our reopening Sunday. Bye, guys.